Hey, good morning, folks. Afternoon, whatever. Yeah, it's three o'clock in the afternoon. My time sense of time is all screwed up. I was up uh, up a lot of the night, um, and then had to get up and on the road for six thirty this morning or something goofy. So, and then it was trash. So got home and took a nap. So yeah, um, wanted to give a quick uh, peek at changes to the aquaponic system, um, and uh, maybe if I can figure out where. to at the camera, um, we'll I'll, I'll plant some plant some some flowers um, and chit chat if anyone feels like asking questions in chat. Um, yeah. Uh, so sh uh, I've got the uh, the second grow bed simulator in place. It's working the way I expected to. I'm very pleased. So let's go take a look. So that's the first one, right? You've seen that one before. This is the new one. And there it is. So it's filling up, right? You can see that now. Um, you can see the pollen line there is the high water mark. So this is about to start draining. I moved the, uh, the buckets with the, with the flowers um, into this grow bed for a little extra weight. And there we go. Drain cycle's just about to start. And you can see the water's dropping. And so this grow bed here drains first really quickly. And it hits empty. And over here you can see the water still pouring out. And this one just keeps running until it hits bottom. And then the, uh, the siphon process, of course, outruns the water feed for both this tank and the overflow off the filter, and then kills the siphon, and then it just starts refilling again. So that's pretty cool. Um, it works pretty much exactly the way I want it to. So I'm pleased about that. Um, so what that means is I'm, you know, clear to uh, get into production and uh, get those other two grow beds, uh, the, the two real grow beds, cleaned up, plumbed, and uh, full of water. Um, so, it, that's a milestone. Um, there was really no point in going any further if this didn't work. Uh, I was going to have to rethink all of my plumbing, um, as well as the expense that would be involved. So yeah, I'm very pleased um, that it works pretty much first try. Um, I did have to replace the uh, uh, bulkhead or the tank fitting down the bottom with the uniseal. You'll notice that's uh, that's why there's no there's no filter screen there. So that's the thing I'm going to need to sort out. But that's I mean at worst it's a shower drain for you know ten dollars. Not that concerned. Um, which is what that is, right? I got a couple of those. Um, there, it's a ten dollar fitting, um, and they do the job fantastic. So, right. So, I think the next thing I want to work on, if I can figure a safe place to put the camera, is I want to plant um, one of these up because I do have some flowers left over. Right, ta-da! I like my marigolds. <clears throat> so let me just see here if I can find a good place to set a camera where y'all can watch. Um, as I work over here, because those are getting wilty, I need to get them into some water. Um, these ones are doing okay. I need to re-level this pipe because these cups don't get any water, which makes them limits them a fair amount. Um, but everything else seems okay, right? I'm impressed by just how fat, how uh, much force that that uh, 50 mil two inch siphon runs at. That's pulling an awful lot of water. I 
if you notice it cut way you know okay it's fading now but it, it comes out you know horizontally out of that pipe for a good 15 centimeters you know three almost three inches before the water starts to curve so there's a decent amount of velocity in that okay um i think the easy answer is what i'm going to do is quickly clean this spot here up and i'll do my work over here and because then it's that's going to make it easy to put the uh that's going to make it easy to put stuff away um I'll just use this bucket, which is as my large parts catch it. I'm always needing, you know, two of this, half of that. And so I keep a, just a, as opposed to having to dig constantly looking for spare parts, I just keep a, uh, a bucket with a bunch of that stuff in it. And that way I've got what I need at hand all the time. I'm not constantly prying the lid off my totes. I mean, it's, by definition, it's weatherproof. It doesn't matter if it, if it gets rained on. And now, if I do this right, I should be able to set the camera here. I want to guess, and now I'm looking at the... Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Um... Hang on a sec, folks. Just trying to figure out how my own tripod works. Okay. There we go. Just drop the legs. I thought that there was a way to raise the, uh, the actual kickstand, like the center rod, but I don't see it. Um, so, anyway. I'll, oh, it's over here. That's what I was trying to do. That's okay. There we are. Pile of shims out of the way here. Until I get everything permanently put together, I'm just using a bunch of bits and bobs and boards to level pieces off and things like that. So that's just a bag of uh, the Leica, which is light expanded clay aggregate, aka hydro. seeing that before I do anything else and waste a lot of my time and yours. Yeah, there we are. Oh yeah, that's fine. Move this down out of the way and that's a little less intrusive in the camera view. Yeah, cool.
what I'm doing is, of course, is I don't need the soil, right? And so what I'm just doing is washing a lot of the excess soil off the root ball. A little bit of it is okay, but I don't need all of it. And I need a catch it. Please. Just one sec. Excuse me. There we go. Otherwise, I'm just going to put clay pellets everywhere. You can see that happening right now. So what I do is I just use this piece of pipe. I'm going to dig down. Get some of these extras out of here. the noise in the camera. Now these beads here are all pretty wet. That means the water line is, you know, this area here is reliably getting at least wicking water if not getting drowned. So that's good. Um, so then I'm going to take this fancy flower and drop it in like that. And then I'm just going to hold, hold this. Pull this up slowly and let the clay beads fill in around it. And that's planted. Okay. And we'll do the same thing over here. I'm just, I'm just literally using, the only reason I'm wearing rubber gloves is every once in a while I get um, uh, texture sensitivity issues, for lack of a better way of putting it. Some days it doesn't bother me, other, other days uh, it just drives me absolutely nuts. So today's one of those days, so just got the gloves on. Um, and there we go, so now again I'm down deep enough that I'm into the, the wet zone for the, uh, for the pellets. I'm just gonna, again, Work the root ball of it. I just want the worst of the dirt to come off of it. Try to get the worst of the dirt off of it. A little bit of the dirt in the system isn't a problem. I just don't want gaps or gobs of it, right? Again, we're just going to lower that in there, hold it roughly in place, pull the pipe up, let the leak that fill in around it, pat that all down, take a little bit from here, Oops, no, that's not going to work. I'll do it when it gets over there. And then it goes back into this one, just like that. And then, so, here's what it looks like. All right? That's the one we just did. Just like that. Pretty straightforward. And then I just poured some of the extra um, hydrogen leak pellets in. And that'll, as the system floods and drains, because the, the whole thing shifts slightly, it'll, uh, it'll level the, the pellets out. I don't need to worry about it. So let's uh, get the next one done. All right. So that will go in there. that over completely so that's unfortunate but oh that's prickly oh that's interesting i didn't know that okay i'm just gonna drop that whole thing in there
So I'll go grab the other the other uh, plant plant bag, and we'll do it again. Um, with this one, um, I'm gonna do this plant first, and then probably plant those two side by side, or a little bit closer than I have been. The uh, water and dirt mix is going to get thrown in on top of the, uh, the strawberry patch. I'm not wasting that. That's all good material. It's good fertilizer. That's good soil, right? So uh, that's not garbage. So the bags, for those of you who are interested, are made out of recycled pop bottle fiber. So there's a company um, in Ontario, they reduce uh, old pop bottles down to um, essentially a filament and then use a process, and that's about a millimeter thick wall on the side, to spin um, these bags. So they're biologically inert which is great in other words um, you know they're not going to decompose at the same token they're not going to get in the way of um, chemistry processes in the water um, and they drain um, the drain rate is about 90% um, so it's not quite as as being not there but it drains fast enough that you just pick the bag up, you wait a second, and then, you know, for what's an 8-liter bag, um, it'll be empty of 8 liters of water in 2 or 3 seconds. Um, not very bad at all. So not quite as good as not having a bag, but, you know, still pretty quick, which gives me the best of both, both worlds, particularly for plants like tomatoes um, and any of the brassicas because they get really stupid about root creation, uh, particularly in aquaponics. Um, as you probably saw from my blog last year and a couple of my videos, um, they uh, generate ridiculous root balls um, in aquaponics systems. So, okay, that is so root bound, it's just not gonna clean up. So it'll go in as it is. Go. There we go, that's that one in. Put another one in over here. Just gonna scoop this up here. And I'll pour some of this back in when I move it. Alright, and again I'm just trying to get down to the wet layer. Yeah, and this one here is pretty much there already. A little deeper. I like having the majority of the root ball fairly close to the water um, because and then as much dry up around the stem that gives the stem lots of support but you don't have to worry about rot or anything like that right okay so and this is <laughs> that's turning into a peat bog I'm not gonna get a lot out of that but that's fine Almost done. And again, all I'm doing, just running a root ball down a bit, getting the dirt off it, right? Keeping the roots intact, getting the roots, um, but getting the, uh, there we are. And shovel some of that around there. Go and number last. Not expensive. Um, it's about two dollars a liter delivered. 
The local greenhouse store, as I commented in a prior video, um, used to carry, used to buy a pallet every year, and I just go in and buy, you know, a couple of bags every time I needed them. But uh, they've stopped doing that, and so I have to order from greenhouse company out of Toronto, and the shipping is the price of the bag. So by the time it gets here, it's about two dollars a liter, um, and that gets pricey. this one second. Back into the system. The rest of these in to top it off. So that's done. Let's take a look. Hey James. Hey Nat. Thanks for hanging out. So there we go. That's the next one, right? And I can just straighten that up a bit. And there we are. So yeah, that's uh, that's those two planters done. And. So the next thing that I'm going to have to do is I've got some 100 mil uh, or 4 inch uh, stormwater drain. I have to cut those into halves, like uh, hemis like you know, semicircles, right, this way, and use that same idea as this thing is, right? You can see what I've done here. Um, and use uh, and make a couple more of those to sit these under. Um, they're just a bit too tall. Uh, so, well, sorry. The water level here comes up a bit too high, and there's two ways to fix it. I can either jack these up, which is a better answer, or I can try reducing that, which is a little bit more of a pain in the backside. So what I'm going to instead do is um, lift these two up a little bit so that they're not quite sitting so deep. You can see that what it is, it's, a, it's an old industrial ice cream container, right? Literally got it from the local ice cream store. Um, so this is four gallons, eight li uh, 12 liter, uh, 16 liter, sorry. And that is two gallons, eight liter. And so it leaves a little bit of a, a space all around. The water can move up around the bag just easy. It flows in from the bottom, fills the whole thing up. Same thing over here, right? Oops, sorry. Same idea here, uh, just using um, uh, rigid plastic, right? Um, I'm trying to get away from these. First off, the sun kills them. Second off is that they are not really recyclable. So while these are much cheaper than those, I like those better. So, but for testing purposes, cheap, easy, accessible, right? So yeah, um, and you can see the flood and drain system keeps, keeps on ticking. I'm really pleased. Um, this has pretty much turned out the way I wanted. Um, it's, I find it remarkable that I can do this. Um, we'll take a look here. Sorry, a little awkward on the walkie. So, a little bit more water, and then this thing will run off. Um, pond up here is doing well. As you can see, I threw in some duckweed, some azola. Um, it's doing a happy job of starting to colonize the tank, which is good. That's using up the, a lot of the extra nutrition in the tank. Um, and at worst, it winds up chicken food. Um, it's very high protein. Um, it's 
miniature, sa it's miniature lettuce, I guess is the best way of putting it, um, that is something in the vicinity of 30% crude protein. <laughs> it's hard to buy fish food that good. Um, and there we go, that's running. So the Azola also picks up all kinds of micronutrients and other stuff that tends to not be in regular water, uh, sorry, in, in regular greens. Um, so, it, you know, if you can stand it, uh, it's got a funny texture. Some people, it, some people use the stuff like, like, like relish um, or make relish with it. Um, and, but the chickens go berserk for it, um, as do the goldfish. So as a minimum, um, what I'll do is I'll just let it slowly take that tank over, processing sunlight, right? Um, and, hang on. So yeah, I'll either let it uh, just take that tank over, um, and, one sec, just putting my uh, tripod legs back down to a reasonable size. Uh, stop that, Michelle. There we go. There we are. Yeah. Uh, and then I should be able to twistify that and tiltify this, and there we go. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there we are. Cool. So yeah, the idea is that um, the uh, I'll just let them take, uh, just like the uh, the Azola, the duckweed, take that tank over, um, and if it gets too thick, everyone just once in a while I'll scoop off, uh, you know, that much and throw it to the chickens, and they'll think they're having a they're having a fiesta. And when I throw the goldfish into that tank, they will systematically cut that down in a matter of a few days. Um, uh, a dozen goldfish will go through a pound of that stuff in two days. <laughs> like, it just doesn't last. So, uh, and again, it's good for the fish, it's good for the chickens, so, yeah, all good. Um, I'm just... Okay. So, yeah, I think I'm done uh, for today. Um... I will be trying to come up with a better way to post this to YouTube. One sec, just adjusting the camera angle here. There we go. That's a bit better. Uh, yeah, um, the last time I did, which was just directly, ex which was direct export from um, the phone to YouTube. YouTube insisted on taking uh, a 1080p or 720p recording and downsampling it to 240p, which is pretty bloody stupid. Um, so what I'm going to wind up having to do is export this, load it into the Apple uh, creation tool, and then up and then you know upload it from the Apple creation tool just so that YouTube doesn't think it's it doesn't think it's getting away with something by downsampling a YouTube a uh, a Facebook image or a Facebook video. It's frustrating. Like you're not buying points from me, um, folks over at YouTube. It's just irritating. I'm trying to talk to as many people as possible, and you're just making it difficult for me. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but I think that's it for today. Uh, siphon just went off again in the background. You can hear that clearly, I hope. Uh, it's 26 degrees Celsius right here. Feels like 32 last I checked. So I'm going to go in the house and get something to drink um, before I get too dehydrated. But I did want to share that little bit, um, just the update that, yes, the, du the double tank system is working. And uh, show you guys what, what it looks like just planting stuff in the aquaponics. Um, if, as always, anyone's got comments, questions, suggestions about aquaponics, what it is I'm doing, why it is I'm doing, how to get started on their own system, go ahead and shout out. Love talking about this stuff. Um, so I think the next likely video you'll see from me will wind up being the, uh, the, the process um, of moving the, uh, the main tank into position, getting it plumbed up. I'm doing this in steps, right? I'm not going to make a whole bunch of changes, and then if it doesn't work, wonder why. I'm trying to do it one change, stare at it. Yep, still works, still works, still works. Next change. So that if it suddenly stops working, I know exactly what point it is. What, what point is I've broken physics? Right, because that's what it is. This is all a physics problem. It's fluid dynamics. Um, it's atmospheric pressures. It's a whole bunch of. Uh, it's biochemistry. It's it's all natural sciences. So, if something stops working, it's because I've done. So it's it's not because it did something wrong. It's because I did something I don't. But that I 
I did something I thought I understood and don't understand is almost invariably the, re the result. So, I'll, yeah, so as we go along, the next major change will be replacing the um, half barrel with uh, the full-size grow bed. Um, and then when that's working the way I expect it to, we'll be replacing the, uh, the, the bottom, you know, the, the, the round bottom third barrel. Um, and by that point, it'll be ready to plant the system out. Time is ticking. It is already June. Um, I should have had this system built out already, but we had some lousy weather um, in May that just made it impossible to get out here. And on top of that, work was busy, finances were tight, just things didn't line up. So I'm about a month behind where I need to be. My only um, solace, if you will, um, is that I'm going to give myself more time by virtue of, sorry, just picking up a little piece of trash that was bothering me. Um, by, in September, the system will get moved into the greenhouse. And because I'm using bucket and bucket as well as bag and bucket, the plants aren't going to have to be rearranged. All I need to do is pull those buckets and bags out, set them aside, pick the system up, move it in, put the bags and buckets back where they came from, done. So if all goes well and I can get some and uh, and I can get a little bit of help doing it, that can be the system can be moved in a weekend. Um, that's part of why I'm designing it the way I am, and the whole point to building it where I'm building it is to make sure that when I'm ready to go and to move it, I know the system works 100%. It, there's no surprises. It's operational. It's safe. You know, you've heard me talk about walk away safe, um, and that's where I'm trying to go with this. So yeah. Alrighty, folks. Thanks very much for hanging out. We'll catch up with you all later. Um, and yeah, uh, as I said before, if you have any comments, questions, suggestions about aquaponics, what else I'm doing, go ahead and shout out. Love to hear from you all. Bye-bye.